who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool Down FM, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits, as well as the classics you know and love. So tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place. Hi, I'm M. Sorcier, creator of Sacrimony, A Tale of Love, Life, and Death, in no particular order. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mattasorcier, M-A-T-T-A-S-O-R-C-I-E-R, and you can also find my Kickstarter at sacrimony.com slash Kickstarter. And you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a returning guest. She's a very talented comic creator. We had her on the show. It feels like a month ago, but I'm sure it was longer than that. It feels like yesterday. <laughs> exactly. We are joined by the creator of The Misadventures of Buddy and Friend. But now we're actually finally talking about the comic she was originally supposed to be on the show for, Sacrimony, joined by M. Sorcier. How are you doing today? I'm awake. <laughs> I've got my coffee that I haven't nice. finished, but we'll get through it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person who, for shame of them, did not watch the last interview of you on the show here, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Oh, man. Uh, I'm a self-taught artist and writer from Bronx, New York, and I am currently launching a trade paperback version of my comic. Yes, that's what I do. My comic, Sacrimony, A Tale of Love, Life, and Death, in no particular order. It is the story of a teenage girl who died. But then she got better, and the catch is that she has demon wings, magical powers, and it's just, it's not a great time for her. It sounds like just a fun Tuesday night in, in the Bronx, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> art imitates life, right? You know, I was looking at the preview pages, I was looking at the video, you know, have a great, amazing talent. Because, I mean, that's what I enjoyed about your work. Because looking at the misadventures of Buddy and Friend versus Sacramony, two very different art styles, two amazing stories as well too you have your comedy you have your action in, in either of these and and i think you've done a wonderful job with this but why was sacrimony important story for you to tell one of those stories where it's like oh i've had this in my head since i was just like a wee baby <laughs> preteen it just stuck with me for so long because it's like i always thought i would like grow out of it and then do something else but like it always found a way of just coming back to me at like the most random times like oh hey remember that story that i used to you know write in my little notebooks when i was like 12 years old like hey yeah you know that's still in my head i should do something with it it's important because it really is sort of an art imitates life because my inspiration for the story despite it being like this big fantastical fantasy tale about like people with demon wings and magical powers and like setting people on fire and whatever like it's still very much rooted in real life because it deals with the sort of biases that people have in real life for example, I'm like the kid of immigrants. I was born in America, grew up in America, but my parents had like a very different idea about like what Americans were like. So it was basically like, oh, you know, these people who don't look like us, like they're not good people. You're, you shouldn't be talking to them. And I'm like, you know, my little baby self in elementary school making friends with of like all different nationalities. And I'm like, these people are awesome. There is literally nothing bad about them. Yeah, I mean, that's where I got the idea of having these characters like, you know, Kajad, the main character who died and has her demon wings and stuff. It's like she looks, you know, quote unquote bad, but she is just a normal kid. Like I just took an idea like that and I ran with it. And then there's there's a lot of like morally gray concepts, I guess. You know, a good person might do something bad in order to get by or like a bad person might do something good. I think what I'm trying to say is no one, well, there are certain exceptions, but most people are not inherently like 100% good or bad. Like they're somewhere, they fall somewhere within, I don't know, the 20 to 80% range or something. The, the gray area of life. Yeah. Like a lot of people are gray because it's depending on where you are and who you're with, you kind of show like different sides of yourself to different groups. And like, that's not a bad thing. It's just like that particular thing that you have in common. Like you might not be the same person in front of your family as you are like in front of your friends. And you might be like a kind of different person, like curate different parts of yourself on the internet. Nobody ever gets the full you. 
And I find that really interesting. And once again, it's not a bad thing. It's just like the thing that you happen to click with that particular group. The wonderful thing about a Kickstarter campaign, and you've done many in your lifetime here. I got eight in three years. I don't know how, well, I don't sleep a lot, which explains a lot. I was going to say, like, how have you survived first off? Oh man, how, how do I survive? I guess. <laughs> Coffee? Coffee definitely helps. I think also I do take breaks to socialize with other human beings. Otherwise, I'd probably be like completely insane by now. Like I have a, a great supportive friend group. I talk to them a lot. I see them in person. I do somehow make time for hobbies that aren't related to drawing or Kickstarter or anything like that. Playing video games, I do crochet for stress relief. And that's super productive because I'm always stressed out. I find ways to get by, I guess. Or like in that song, it's like, I, I get by with a little help from my friends. Let's talk about the, the Kickstarter tiers. That was the second part of the question. <laughs> so. Oh, sure. So yeah, I've got the digital book, which is, you know, in my opinion, it's an absolute bargain. It's 180 pages of story for $15. I, I like to make things accessible for people to read. I don't want to create a barrier where someone's like, oh man, I really want to read Sacrimony, but you know, like the PDF is $25. Like, what am I going to do? I don't want to pay $25 for a PDF. $15, that's a good price. I feel like people would be willing to pay that for essentially what is issues one through five plus like a lot of bonus material there's like 11 extra pages of story that i didn't get to fit into the original single issues there's like 15 pages of q a comics that i love doing basically i ask my audience to ask either me or like a sacrimony character questions <laughs> And I answer them in like this cutesy comic form and I usually do really stupid, silly answers. That's so awesome. yeah, it's a lot of fun. And the feedback I've gotten is that people really love reading the Q&A comics because they're just so stupid. So it's, it's a fun time. It's 180 pages, $15 for the digital. The physical book is 35 and that also comes with the PDF. I've also got these cool black metal tarot cards. Oh yeah, plus, I saw those. Those were plus amazing. the book. Yeah, because it's like all of my covers for the standard covers have been uh, tarot card themed. Issue one was like the Ace of Wands. Issue two is the Two of Wands, and so on. So I was like, at some point, I really did want to make actual tarot cards out of them. And people have been asking me, like, oh, are you gonna do a tarot card set? I'm like, yeah, I will. You know, it's six cards right now because I've done six covers. So like, as I keep going and doing more covers, there will be more cards eventually. These are a limited time thing because they're like super specialized to print and kind of a pain in the ass. So it's like I'm doing them only for this campaign. And then like, you know, when inevitably the, the Sacrimony like 6 through 10 collection comes out, there'll be like another limited edition set of the cards. So eventually yeah. you're going to get through the whole tarot set of, with the series. Is that what you're planning? It's a long series. So yeah, there's like, I think, what, 70 something tarot cards. It's a long story. There's going to be a lot of cards, I promise you. And hopefully if I can keep cranking out comics at this rate, like maybe we'll get done before the next 20 years is over. Who knows? So 25 campaigns in the next 10 years, something like that, you know? I got, I, I don't know if my heart can take it. <laughs> We'll see. We'll find out. I'm just testing my limits now, I guess. Also, I've got a single issue collector's bundle because I still have some of the old single issues left over and they're not going to be in print anymore since I'm coming out with the trade paperback. So this is also like one of those limited time. Grab it while it still exists because I'm not doing more of these kinds of situations. <laughs> And I do like the standard covers. They're very lovely. They look nice, like side by side, because they're very like they're striking images. You know, beautifully done. I love the colors. I love the different themes that you had there. And side by side, it's it's pretty impressive. Like in that image that I saw, so it's incredible. Ah, uh, thank you. There's also the option to sponsor a page, which mm -hmm. is basically like nobody makes money on Kickstarter. I think this is like common knowledge now. I mean, there are a few people who are still like, oh, well, you made $3,000 on Kickstarter. You have $3,000 now, right? And like, no, that all goes to printing and shipping and manufacturing and Kickstarter fees. Like, I don't get a lot of that. So the sponsor a page is basically in case anybody feels like paying me the page rate to have made like a sacrimony page basically it's 250 dollars, and they get a metal print of the page that they sponsored and they get credit as a sponsor in the pdf so it's like this page has been brought to life by like your name here that's awesome and that's also it. you get the warm fuzzy fields of knowing that i got paid fairly to make <laughs> exactly one page of sacrimony which i appreciate and you will have my eternal gratitude and all of the original art has sold out which is pretty cool i sold the original pencil sketch of the cover and i sold the original colors of the cover the pencil sketch went really fast it sold on like the second day oh wow so i was like yes i'm 
I feel like I'm making art and people want this art. This is amazing. The the hand colored cover, I think I it sold like two days ago or so, but I'm I'm glad that it's finding a nice forever home because like I don't trust myself with my own artwork. I'm very bad at storing my things or it's like it won't get the love it deserves. It'll just be sitting there in my portfolio and then my portfolio will get lost and I'm just like Ah, damn. Well, I don't know where that is anymore. It's nice to get it out and get into someone else's house and, you know, have them like frame it and put it on their wall or, you know, hug it at night or something. I don't know what people do with art. (laughs) Stare at it longingly, depending on where they put it. Yeah, that too. Like I I could get behind that. And last but not least, which is something I'm really like excited about is that I'm doing variant cover commissions for other creators. It's $300, which I think is an absolute bargain because you're getting a traditionally colored comic cover and you get the original. So if you want to like, you know, hold on to it and love it and cherish it, you can do that. Or if you want to like try to sell it on your own Kickstarter campaign, you can do that too. And technically you're like your money back, I guess. If you want like a pretty Art Nouveau style cover, like what I did for this particular trade paperback, like Hey, hit me up. You know, you're you're giving great value, and and you mentioned one thing that was that was interesting that I think a lot of creative people in general, not just artists, uh, deal with is fair market value for services and skills. I think that's something that is grossly misunderstood by a lot of people because of the amount of free content that's currently out there, and even worse with. AI and I won't get into that conversation, but that's like a, an entire three days worth of rant for me. So yeah, let's not go there. We'll, we'll save it for the next interview. Uh, All right. <laughs> but yeah, fair market value for being a creative person is something that's rather interesting. And being a, a creative person yourself, there, what? How have you dealt with uh, maybe newer people that are trying to approach you from our commission standpoint or from a, a business standpoint? Uh, oh, man, I used to be so timid about this in my like 20s and stuff. Like I used to always lowball myself and be like, oh, well, you know, I'll do this like full color thing for $15 because it's like it's so great that you want to buy my art. But now I'm just like if someone isn't offering me what I think my skill set is worth, I'm just going to be like, look, man, sorry, I can't do it. And yeah, I mean, that's that's all you can do, because once you let someone lowball you, then you're just going to start letting everybody else lowball you because you're like, oh, well, you know, someone was only willing to pay me like $50 for this comic cover. Like, I guess that's all people are willing to pay. And like, don't do that to yourself. Because you also end up hating the thing you're working on as you're working on it. I don't know about other artists, but I can always feel the mood that I was feeling when I was working on a particular piece. Like if I was feeling particularly crappy that day, I'll remember it. And I'll look at that comic page and be like, oh man, I was feeling so crappy when I was working on this. So then what about your artwork that brings you joy? Oh, yeah, I I feel that too. And then I'm like, oh, man, this page was awesome. I remember how much fun I had working on it. This was so great. It goes both ways, definitely. It's not just a negative thing. But I do also remember like the pieces that I love and the commissions that like I particularly loved working on too. You know, looking at the, the characters you've drawn, and we have a couple of them showcased in your lower third there as well too. When you were drawing these characters, what kind of sparked character designs for your characters that you've just created for this series? How did they come about? That's that's an interesting question. There is method behind the madness. It's just that I have to find the words to articulate it because it's something that like I haven't thought about in a long time. But I mean, for example, for Kajad, who's like the demon winged teenage girl, I wanted to just make her look like mostly a normal normal girl normal face like she's like a very small build she's like under five feet tall because she's like 13 years old but just have a few things be off such as like the white hair and the demon wings but other than that you know if you take away the demon wings she just looks totally normal totally harmless it's just that that one thing that she has to hide in order to look normal and fit in as for the mother as for unica i wanted to make her look kind of like warm and approachable which is why I gave her like a very warm color scheme like like a warm brown skin she's got like this kind of reddish brown hair yeah just to make her look like soft and warm I guess that's what I was noticing about when I was looking through those the preview pages as well too it's just you have beautiful color schemes all throughout you like you definitely fit your your different areas that I saw from the ship to the outdoor scenes that you had your character designs on from the evil villain so to speak that I saw on the page oh, the, the little edge lord exactly <laughs> <laughs> very unique character designs that you can definitely separate them in a crowd because it's just yeah it's just beautifully done I just I can't say enough about 
the designs of the characters and the interactions as well too. Like, oh, thank you. When I'm designing a character, I need to feel like connected to them. I need to know enough about the character and their history to be able to like design them properly and make them fit into what I need them to look like. If I don't feel connected to a character and know enough about them, I can't draw them. So I have to like amass this encyclopedia of information about them in my head before I try to put them on paper. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And when I've tried to do that, like when I'm like, oh, I have a cool character design idea and I just draw a character with no context. And then I start giving them a story Then I'm like, oh, wait, no, I have to change the way this character looks now. So do you have like character profile sheets, like what they do in D&D &D or anything like that for your, your characters? I had some on the, the Sacrimony website itself. I had started doing character bios because I realized that like I give my characters sort of like unusual names. So people have a hard time remembering the name sometimes. So it's like, oh, all right, guys, I'll, I'll throw you a softball here and I'll put the, the character bios on the website. I'm also going to come out with an encyclopedia of sorts within the next Kickstarter campaign where it's going to talk about like all of the locations the races it's going to have like character bios good reference for people who have a hard time keeping track of this because i realized that not everybody lives in my head and knows everything so i should probably put some of this information like in a handy book that they can reference we're not mind readers just like when i was in it everyone thought i could read their minds and fix their issues yeah, you know, I, I had that issue when I was pitching the story to some of my like beta readers and friends and stuff where it was just, you know, I would give them these little bits of story, but not the important bits of information that give them the context for what's going on. So I started referring to it as like head memos, like, oh, didn't you get my head memo? <laughs> like, oh, that happened. And they're like, okay, that makes more sense now. If you haven't heard of Sacrimony, like, or if you've heard of it, but you've never thought of like giving it a read, like absolutely give it a read. It's, it's a beautifully drawn story full of lots of emotions. It'll tug at your heartstrings. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It'll make you like recoil in horror. Like it has all of the emotions in it, in this one comic, I promise you. And much more to come. Much more to come. Absolutely. I'm not stopping this anytime soon. I'm going to be your problem forever. And I'm sorry about it. Hey, it's not a problem if we enjoy everything that you do. So it's all right by me. Ah, thank you. Well, Em, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where is the Kickstarter campaign? When does it end? And anything else you want to promote? All right. So the Kickstarter campaign ends at 1 a.m. on April 25th. Like as of now, as we're talking, there's like nine days left. You can find it at sacrimony.com slash Kickstarter. You can find me at Twitter and Instagram at Matta Sorcier. That's M-A-T-T-A-S-O-R-C-I-E-R. -T -T -E and yeah, feel free to say hi. I like to talk to people. I'm, I don't bite a lot. But I'm just laser focused on sacrimony right now, just trying to take it to the finish line. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You could, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. Website is going through a revamp. So I have a post up there saying, go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT media. Our podcast is actually back now, which is two geeks talking dot podbean dot com or just so search for two geeks talking on any of your audio streaming services that you listen to your podcasts and you'll get this interview and a ton more. You will not be bored. I can definitely say that for sure. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on two geeks talking.